welcoming to the show, Spin Hi. Magazine's lip Hi. service, Brian and Hi. Brian Hi. and Nikki of Silver Sun Pickups. How are you? Hi, very good. good. How Thanks are for you? having us here. Thanks for coming. It's great yeah. to see you. Just got off tour with our mm -hmm. friend Paris Jackson. That's right. So sweet. Yeah. Yeah, that's She's right. the best. She was on the show not long ago. How I was the tour, you. by the way? Oh, that's nice. She was. She was. Um, you know, it's fun when it's, I don't come into Hollywood that much. So lately, when uh, I take certain lefts and rights and hills, I start feeling like a, like a teenager. <laughs> right. And it gets me, I get like a little goosebumpy for some reason. Like, ooh, I'm in the city. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting yeah. enough, yeah, do you live in Silver Lake? <laughs> I, I live in Eagle Rock. Eagle I Rock. live in Outwater. Okay. But I grew up we in We did live in Silver Lake. So. <laughs> I'm an L.A. guy. I like it. Yeah, okay, so the show is a little bit about the history of the band. Obviously, six mm. records in. <laughs> sort of like, this is your life. We can get into all kinds of pop sure, culture. You want. We were just talking about The Last of Us, by the oh, way. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest shows ever on TV. Well, it's just, uh, we have little hangouts. And we've been on tour. And we came, I came back and my wife organized a couple of friends. One of my friends actually worked at Naughty Dog, the the who invited me to when they were making Last of Us 12 years ago? I got to go to the the their offices and look at it a little bit. Amazing. I was Video, a fan. Yeah. I've been a fan since then, and um, it's 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 hard to convey to people who don't know anything about video games. Uh, that you just experience one of the best narrative experiences of your life, and. The second one, buckle up, everybody, because Last of Us Part Two is insane and narratively uh, just so daring and so upsetting and wonderful. So for them to make this show and it be so close to the actual creators of the game and then the person that had Craig Maisel, Amazon, I think, who's a huge fan of the game, to see it actually playing out and having people around me that I love experience what I experienced in the same fashion is so exciting. How like, close is it to the original it's script? Exactly. 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 Yeah. The Even end, the love story that on like the third episode, everything is pretty that true. no, that's hinted at. That it's it's almost like everything's expanded. That's a little changed, but it's all in the same vein of it. Like that that's more because you are Joel and and Ellie, mainly Joel, you can't really disappear from that point of mm -hmm. view. So you come in and um, and Bill is alive and it's sort of a different outcome, but because you can't get that story, but you pick up, it's more tragic, the Bill and Frank <laughs> thing, but it's the same kind of thing. That's his partner and, and he was in love, but he, yeah, it's really wild. By the time but you listen so, to this, by the way, this, the finale was last night, <laughs> but I'm sure when you. this airs, people have already seen the finale, but uh -huh. we don't want to necessarily give I'll, away. I'll just say this though, that, uh, there's a scene in the first, in the fir it really was something that, opening of this last Last of Us episode. Did you watch it? No, you didn't watch I, it. I wanted to watch it last night, but the, I fell asleep. The, <laughs> the person that you'll see in the cold open, you'll know what I'm talking about, is the is Ashley Johnson, who is Ellie in the game. Like, the, the actors from the game are in the show, and oh, they give them great roles. And the meta oh. stuff that goes on with Ashley Johnson, you hear her voice. Her voice is Ellie. Having Ellie in the show f for Ellie, it's, it was like some other level of like, I can't believe how good this is. <laughs> so you already know about season two. You went yeah, to buckle the, up, everybody. He's, You're going to be pretty pissed off. <laughs> he's been playing the Last of Us theme song for years now. Yeah, amazing. Um, so during our, our show. Do a little break, I'll does, play it. <laughs> but now it's interesting now that norm, more people know the show. It's, it's like yeah. more yeah. people get excited. Well, it's massive when, now. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a little, it's so, I, I've never been one of those people that wanted to strangle a band. Like, you know, we used to have friends that was like, no, I don't like this band. And we always thought, I wish the world would hear this band. You know, we wouldn't go, oh, now I hate them because everybody knows. <laughs> I would get Who's one of those bands, by the way? Because for me, it's Jellyfish, which oh, not yeah. a lot of people know. Yeah, I saw favorite. Jellyfish with Black Crows. My favorite band. I maybe saw them ever. in they're Santa good. Barbara yeah. years ago. I want to dive yeah. into Jellyfish again, oh, honestly. God, they're so good. good, right? So good. Underrated, by the way. Jellyfish, yeah. 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 Wow. I, I, I remember Jellyfish at the, the Greek theater opening up for Black Crows, just like I remember Red Cross. Like seeing right. Red Cross for the first time, and the same exact kind of thing. Like, oh wow, I really love this fan. In fact, I think Stephen from Red Cross might have been in Jellyfish. I think so. I think so. Yeah. I think there's a little crossover. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so is there a band like that for you that we like one of the most, you know underrated band that no one really knows that's sort of under the radar? Uh, mm, that you wish would be heard, like yeah. a new band. Yeah. 
as I opposed was thinking to gatekeeping when you said them, I guess, right? radar, like, like Radar Brothers are oh, friends okay. of ours that sure. I always thought were the best well, band. Yeah. They're my favorite band. Mm. And I, and yeah, I, back in the day, there's probably yeah. a bunch. I think Sparkle Horse. Oh, is yeah. A great band I, too. I think yeah. that's an interesting legacy that I don't see. Like, we were talking about that. In modern bands, there's still time, you know? So I don't have that kind of relationship with it. Like, oh, I wish, I always think, like, I hope people, many people hear this, but they still have time to, to be reach it, whoever yeah. they reach, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not like about successfully being popular. It's just more like you want people to hear art that you like. Yeah. And if, you know, if they don't, whatever, but it's always exciting to, when they do. But bands that I think I mean, about was- that had huge impacts, I always think about ones that have huge impacts, but I don't hear that much. And I always think about 10,000 Maniacs as one. Oh, uh, yeah. I just think, Wow. Well, every time we play that, like backstage, we made those mixes and stuff. Right. Every time right. a Ten Thousand Maniac song comes on, people react. <laughs> Either right, a they good. ask me who it is, yeah, because they like it, or they go, I haven't heard this in so long, and I think, how is that possible? Like, where where are they? Yeah. Well, what, where is that in the ethos? You know, they were pretty huge for a moment. Huge. Yeah. Well, they, they had were. a huge unplug. That yeah. was like one of the biggest. Divinals is another band mm-hmm. I think about. That everyone knows I touch myself, but yep. they have. Su- she's such a good singer. Yeah, she's. Great. I mean, it was great that Sinead um, O'Connor. Kate Bush came back to such a yeah, forefront. Yeah. Not I, that she was underrated, but that she that came became so popular again. Yeah. So. yeah, she was rated, I guess, in my mind. But I, I guess I never would have assumed it would have crossed over that large. But then you think about it, and in the way kids take music now, they don't care when it was made uh-huh. or like that. And so <laughs> you're gonna. It's almost unfair of every single song in the world on the popular radio to go against. Running up that hill because you have yeah. no chance. <laughs> I wish the, I owned the publishing to that it's song. It's the coolest <laughs> song. It's one of the best songs of all time. Yeah. But yeah. I love the fact, by the way, that you love pop culture, Brian, because I feel like we could speak about that. I know that you're into Black Mirror, Fast oh, yeah, and the I Furious, Mirror. Harry Ooh, Potter. He's so on Fast and Furious. I'm Fast right. and Furious is more like a funny. <laughs> yeah. People explain that because we it was a uh, it was like a, almost an art project that our friends and and Christopher, our drummer, and our friend Mike from England and Hamford, like we just decided to. We were sick of everyone telling us that people that we liked that those were decent or fun, and we thought that can't be. And so we just made ourselves watch them all in three, two days, and it started grim because they weren't fun. <laughs> and then, they, and then, then they some, got their own joke. Something then, happened. Well, the Rock shows <laughs> up, and there's something fun about the Rock knowing this is so stupid. <laughs> And he's winking, and it becomes like real stunts that are actually pretty amazing. And there's also something fun about Vin Diesel thinking this thing rules. Right. And so watching them, him not get it <laughs> is something else. But I will say we felt dirty after. Like we felt really weird. Like we all woke up after it was all done and looked at each other like, hey, you all right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we still we're, had fun. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, yeah, ride or die, you know? <laughs> I'm going to blow your mind. There was uh, a period of about, I think it was about 10 years ago, I had a company where we managed actors out in LA and we mm. managed Gal Gadot. Ooh. Back Ooh. when she was in The Fast and Furious. She's the uh-huh. best. No one knew oh, that we, oh, this we was going to... Yeah, he kept talking did. about it. We didn't know. <laughs> we and did. God we, bless. We right? were like, Gal Gadot, is, Gal Gadot and Han. Yeah. We, those two were it. The, men, the amount of backflips they had to do to keep <laughs> Han in that, like the timeline of Fast and Furious is so funny because every, every, <laughs> everyone. At some point, it doesn't seem like it matters. They're like, no, you know, it you doesn't. Get it. But it is hilarious <laughs> because he's they every single movie. They're like, and then he's gonna go to Tokyo, where you assume he goes get killed. But then they go, oh, next when he comes back, he hasn't quite done that yet. And so it's like we're all in like 2002 technology. <laughs> <laughs> it's another ride at Universal. <laughs> my, I just took my son to Universal Studios. He's seven, and he's. Went, you know, the Fast and Furious ride is something that you have no choice. You have to just be on because yeah. it's a part of that. It's part tour. of the tour. Um, it's part of the tour. It's part of the tour. My son, Love the tour. <laughs> my son's just like, what is this? Like Fast and Furious? Is, is it just dancing girls and like a helicopter? I'm like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> is Jaws still there? Or they yeah. need to redo yeah, that because that was really looking a little I bit. Think cramped. King Kong is gone. Yeah. Though, no, apparently. King Kong's King there. Kong is he, still there. He was really it. excited about King Kong and Jaws because he loves the Jaws music. But Jaws wasn't looking too realistic the last time I went. It looked wasn't a little... looking the first time you went. Though? <laughs> it looked like they needed to redo it a little bit. A piece of me feels like that's part of it. Is yeah, it? yeah, because yeah, he thought it was. I think it was palatable for my son that it was so fake. Yeah, and that made it fun. 
You know what I mean? Because if it looked real, it would have been scary or something. Yeah, if it looked yeah. real, it wouldn't be Jaws. It'd be, yeah. it'd uh-huh. be like, right? It would be. <laughs> That's how Jaws looked in the movie. Right. Great. So. Was one? <laughs> Just one of those, like the Meg or some weird shark movie. <laughs> Although to be fair, back when I saw it years ago, I, I thought it was real. I mean, it looked real to me. I never so. thought it was real, but it, was, it, did, it didn't matter. Yeah. Like when I, I, you knew things weren't real. Like my friend's father, when I was really little, was a now now that I'm older, I understand. Like he's a working actor. Like you know, he had he he made a living as an actor. He'd show up in these weird movies like Masters of the Universe and play a lizard and stuff. <laughs> play a lizard, and he'd do the voice That's of right. Snoopy, you know. Aww. And um, he played the wizard in this stunt show in University of for Conan the Barbarian. Sure, I went to that. Yeah, so we got treatment. We would get backstage and see this dragon sitting down here and see like Red Sonia walking around and the guy who's like, you know, Chippendales dancer playing Conan. And they would scratch our heads, you know, little kids. And even though I saw all that, you know, and I knew that guy, when we'd get up front and the show would start, it didn't matter to me that I knew that it was fake. It was still representing mm-hmm. things that yeah. were freaky. You still believed it. Well, it's just like, ooh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, you knew that shark wasn't real, but it was scary still. <laughs> we could do a whole podcast on Universal Studios and the history oh. of it. It's fascinating. It, it really Isn't is. It? it kind of is. Like, <laughs> it is. It is really strange. And they're, they're doubling down on screen rides. Like, I have to close my eyes so much on a ride. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it's sick. Harry Potter. I, I got to revisit it at some point. And now word from a new friend of the show. Fellas, do you feel like you might want to spice things up in the bedroom? Blue Chew Tablets, just for fun, will bring that added spice and fun back into your bedroom. What's a Blue Chew Tablet, you say? It's a chewable tablet with the same active ingredient as Viagra and Cialis. The difference is it costs just a fraction, it's delicious, and you don't have to deal with going to the doctors and having that awkward conversation with them. It's as easy as going online, speaking to a medical professional, and they send them your way. Use my code, that's L-I-P-P-S, LIPS, for a free month supply. Just go to BlueChew.com. You pay only five bucks for shipping. Do yourself a favor, bring the fun back in your bedroom. And now, back to the show. Take me yeah. back to the beginning of the yeah. band, the early 2000s. Well, we met at Universal Studios. <laughs> yeah. What about the time we the car was open from Back to the Future <laughs> and we got into it when we were playing the uh, a show there? And well, we our were... friend Mike was in town, too. We did this. We, didn't we talk about this comedy bang bang? Maybe. I think so. We're, we're, our friend Mike from England is in town. He's not a stranger to Los Angeles, so he knows that, you know, it's not, you know, it, 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 the myth and stuff. It, it, some of it is there and some of it's not, but th- he flew in and we were playing Universal Amphitheater, which was where Hogwarts is. <laughs> yeah, right. And he just landed and he wanted to come hang out with us. And he, uh, in a very in an LA way, he just thought this is hilarious because a just random Back to Future DeLorean is in the parking lot because right. Universal is just like, I don't know, put it there. Yeah. And it was, we just opened it and we're hanging out in it. <laughs> we took pictures. And, stuff. and that's and how like, the band began. It was, it was a full that's working thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's where we said, let's do this. And we went 80 miles an hour. Um, actually, the legend goes, you actually met, both of you met on a plane. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. In a way, yeah. Yeah. We did. Yeah. yeah. Nikki Going was. to uh, England, we're both a part of this uh, exchange program in mm-hmm. Cambridge, England. And then now here we are. You were from, she was in Orange County. It was a real... You know, it was a real <laughs> uh, Capulet and <laughs> Orange. You he were was, a kid from Orange County. I was a kid from Los Valley. Angeles. <laughs> you were stealing liquor, maybe. You, there was yeah, yeah. Nikki was taking some well, bottles of alcohol. Well, at the time, the we were under 21. So it was an international flight. So they were giving away the alcohol, but not a few were. For the purpose of this mm-hmm. podcast, yeah. you were 22. I was 22. Yeah. 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 Okay. You were, you were, well, no, it was international waters. International, <laughs> you can be 18. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and you were, yeah, you didn't get, you weren't given any because you were taking. I took, yeah. <laughs> Your it's little fun. hand kept reaching out. And I just thought, oh, that's an interesting person, <gasps> you know. So you meet on this plane. You're stealing mm-hmm. some liquor. Mm-hmm. We were basically a part of this an interesting moment in life that I think ends up being a very big, uh, alters your your world. A you lot know? of people we met on that plane 
we're still friends with. Yeah, right. you met. So we met some really good people, and we're also now living abroad, which was the point of it. I think that was the point of our my parents and maybe your parents, like just saying, yeah, this is a good way to cheaply live in Europe and see the world, you know, and and do some take some classes. And you have we had a class with a, um, a teacher from King's College in Cambridge. It was in Cambridge, England. And it shaped probably everything, you know, because before that, you, you know, we, I didn't quite know. Were you Anglophiles? Were you into British music I, growing yeah, up? Yeah, I, I, um, I knew. I knew. I, I, I was interested <clears throat> because I had gone on a um, exchange program in high school to Stuttgart, Germany, and I was like, oh, I'd love to go on another one of those. And I feel like I just decided one day and then saved up all all my money and then I was like let's just do it because I was going to community college at the time and I was you know Same. just kind of like I wouldn't say drifting but I just didn't um I would say drifting <laughs> have a focus so I was like this is this seems like a great opportunity and then yeah that's how we uh and then our our schools just happened to have the same program that mm -hmm. combined so um what were you listening to musically both of you growing up everything like, like at that at that moment. Yeah, at that 90s, moment. I remember I brought two CDs. One was Dinosaur Junior, and one was Jesus and Mary Chain. On that <laughs> first summer, but at the time we were listening, we just started listening to Radiohead because we ended up seeing Radiohead at a small club there. Yeah. When we we were just like, oh, I've heard this song Creep. Yeah, like, I said that was like, Pablo Honey Oh my days. God! Well, it was the Ben, no. or, or it was. Mm -mm. My Iron, Iron Lung EP. My Iron Lung EP. They had an EP mm. that came out. The Ben's right. about to come out. Yeah. Oh, they're back when they were a rock band because then they went a little electronic. Well, it was, it's the same. It was yeah. it was the same. Like it was any, mind blowing. Anything that's happening now with radio like when we see Radiohead now, it's the same. It was exactly like seeing that band in that two hundred person club in Cambridge before the bends. Like the, whatever magic it was there. Just you know, it was we were just I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I couldn't process it. It was so good. I still consider those two records two of my favorite records of all time. I mean, I'm I'm a big Okay computer. Yeah. I'm a big fan events. of that. The smile. We just saw yeah. them. It's like, man, right. it's just this Johnny Green looks the same. <laughs> yeah. He but does anyway, like Cambridge is like a, a pretty small town surrounded by the college, more like a New Haven, Connecticut kind of vibe. Which is perfect for us to run around and has borders and things. And then London is about a forty-five minute train ride, so it's just all of a sudden we're unleashed here, you know. And you, yeah, I wouldn't say I was an Anglophile, but I loved a lot of British bands. Mm -hmm. I think at that time I was yeah. a real big Lush fan, mm. you know. Um, pulp and all those bands. I love pulp yeah. later. Yeah. I think yeah. Pulp I got later, mm. yeah, but um, Val my late Valentine yep. and Lush, PJ Harvey, PJ Harvey. Hey, did you see Oasis? No, I wanted to at the yeah. Cambridge Corn Exchange. You were a big U2 head, though, I remember. I did like U2. I and they were know. they were a hole in my... I didn't know them, but we laughing because Nikki said she was going to go to Ireland to go see them. <laughs> and she went to their restaurant and she did I see did them. I did see the Ed. She was so nice. I'm like, By the way, the nicest guy. I know. Nicest but it's guy. cute that he was at like their restaurant or yeah. that's, at their like, hotel or whatever. I'm like, oh my gosh. She went to Ireland. I saw him. I, like, I don't want to name drop, but I did have dinner with both of them once. I don't think Bono said a word to me, but the Edge and I spoke for like three hours and Aww. it was incredible. Careful. I don't know why I didn't connect with Bono. Careful but. what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. At the time, you I think connect to who you connect. You get what you get and you don't get upset. That's true. Yeah. I think the Edge's daughter was working for Apple at the time and oh, I was like asking wow. him all these secrets. I was like, do you think he could tell me about the next iPhone? He's like, she doesn't even tell me. Like, mm -hmm. I'm yeah, her dad. I don't yeah. think she knows. Yeah. She, think Nobody she's knows. I think she'll <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so you went to see you two, you meet, and then all of a sudden did you feel like there was a kindred spirit soul Friendsh thing going Friendship. on? Friendship. Friendship. Yeah. Yeah. yeah his, his exchange mom was the mom of my exchange mom, so there was a little family Yeah, we just stayed thing. close, you know, yeah. stayed friends, and then when we all came back here, it was like being ripped out of Neverland, we were just at home, and and we all had you know, I was like living with now my girlfriend at the time, and now I'm back at my house in <laughs> Japan. And I'm just like, what happened, you know? And then uh, when we start migrating out of our homes, we all sort of start living together. And at that time, Silver Lake was very cheap, and full of bands and full of art, and that's where we uh, migrated. And we lived in a house together. And even the name came a little bit from like a run to mm -hmm. an, you know, like a liquor store. Yeah, right? we so. lived above the Silver Sun liquor store. Um, and when we started screwing around making music, 
we needed a name and I remember the time I liked the idea of Beechwood Sparks and things that had a little bit of a uh, it sounded Related. a little bit like a gang like a little bike gang yeah. or something but but also just on its own could just mean whatever but if you had an answer for it it's just kind of the location you know and, and so that's we named ourselves that pretty right on right away so we're stuck with it <clears throat> I love yeah. the fact that you started playing around and even people were bringing you CDs of your music later and like, on <clears throat> here's yeah. some bootlegs here and you're like <laughs> yeah. maybe we need to yeah. record something because well at that time too we would go to Spaceland or Silver Lake Lounge like almost every night we were seeing yeah. new music we were just sponges big scene there yeah and so it was the perfect time for what we wanted to start but we were getting so much information just from so many different you eclectic know, bands in that area at the time um I remember my sister's four years older, and so I had a little bit of a window into Los Angeles's scene, you know, being like a little kid going to a No Bozo jam at the Whiskey <laughs> right, or something. I think I played some of those. <laughs> yeah, remember that? It was like yeah. 30 bands, yeah. and they all, all pretty much are, if you squint, versions of Skid Row and yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> right. like, and well, I was in a band with the singer of L.A. Guns. I don't no know if that way! Was that was like my first band in Hollywood. So we used Aww. to play with Jane's Addiction. LA Guns yeah. opened up for everyone. I saw them open up for ACDC. So yeah. LA Guns yeah. has a song that I feel like is very underrated called Over the Edge. Yeah, great That's song. off of yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Hollywood Vampire. Yeah, is that yeah, it? It's yeah. also in the movie Point Break. Mm -hmm. I love that you know that, by the way. It's such a good song. It's part of our It's part of our mix. It's part of our... <laughs> awesome. There's all DJ that song. Yeah. It's so cool. It's, I don't know. It gets me in this weird vibe yeah I don't know LA Guns is underrated that's for sure yeah because um, you even went through like a Motley Crue phase a mini well, phase little, or, like, I, yeah. I, you know you, you who didn't yeah, <laughs> yeah I think you when, when, you when you're little you just and you start making that pivot everyone likes music mm -hmm. but then some people pivot and they start really liking it in a different way you know you wanting to like live in it and become um I don't know. It starts to define you in a way, you know, or you think it does, or it's part of your armor. Um, and so for, in the beginning, it was through my sister who also liked Depeche Mode and stuff. It would be like Motley Crue and stuff and Dr. Feelgood, which was my first concert. If you don't count New Edition at Disneyland or the I Chipmunks, the <laughs> Chipmunks, Why you count that? Chipmunks and the Magic <laughs> Flute at, at a forum. No, you count at the that? Forum. Do you count wow. that? I don't know. I mean, I think yeah, so. I, I think we can that. count those. I'll give you yeah. three things, my friend. <laughs> we're, we're gonna... And you tell me which one you like. <laughs> Choose your own adventure. It was my first concert because they're all right. Chipmunks and the Magic Flute at the Forum. New Edition at Disneyland on Tom Sawyer's Island. Or Motley Crue, Dr. Philgood at the Forum. I'm going to go Motley Crue. Okay. What about you, Morgan? I don't know. We have to Chipmunks. say... Chipmunks, okay. Dude, yeah. they just have a, it was a concert to me. <laughs> they have a quartet in the back singing, and then they just beat it It up. was a rock concert to me. I was excited. <laughs> yeah. I also introduced Nikki Six to his wife, so I'll take no. full credit of that. So there's a lot of uh, Nikki Nikki Six. Six. tentacles <laughs> coming out here. But uh, anyway, you see me, you form the band, you start playing out a lot in Silver mm -hmm. Lake. And then early on, I, yeah. I love the fact that you were sort of fighting what was going on. So you would get calls from labels and even Q Prime at some point called. You're like, yeah, uh, let's put those, those people can go know. to our voicemail, we just, right? We just didn't. It was hard for us to, like, we were so lucky to be thriving, like, be doing, playing shows in this area in Los Angeles. And again, kind of talking about before knowing about LA, it, at this exact time at that area, it was very, and not, uh, consciously, it just was Los Angeles has a very strange, weird, rigid scene that is w the clubs are outdated in their ideas. It's all like this I, this thing that's not even like around. And there's pay to play and mm -hmm. they're rude to bands and this goofiness that really just cuts out anything interesting. And then, of course, all that does is leave this vacuum for everything else to be able to thrive in this part of Los Angeles with which was like the eastern part of Los Angeles right so there's all these ramshackle clubs everywhere no pay to play none of that stuff and the and the community of people that live there who are not playing music are people that go to those clubs to hang out like the friends yeah, coffee they, house yeah they always bands have free are just nights. there so they start just recognizing and knowing songs just by going to have drinks with their friends 
You know what I mean? That was around the time of Elliot Smith, or a little bit yeah. earlier. Yeah. That was probably around the time. Yeah, yeah we right saw right. Elliot play a bunch in just like little shows, and so like there's this. But the club promoter is like they had these great like residencies and free nights. Like free they nights. just were trying to get people down, and so it just became and then this would, place where everyone would go. People yeah. would eat at coffee shops that had your your band poster on it, and so it just became this little and Community. then Indy 103 was around yeah. Yeah. you know and KXLU obviously playing stuff but you couldn't really get it and so like but Indy 103 would spend a sliver of their time playing local bands like Giant Drag and or Mike's mm-hmm. band and so all of a sudden you you have this almost like almost econo- economics like the way this thing works you have this station that has a loyal following in this area that's playing local bands that don't even have really records at these clubs so it's feeding into the whole thing and it's thriving you know all these clubs are sold out and packed and stuff and there was a, a local record store that our friend yeah. Todd owned called Sea level and he would sell our CDRs where you know they wouldn't really be sold at other places CDRs <laughs> I love that yeah, yeah. <laughs> also amoeba music that amoeba, still right. exists today yeah, but they would guy. also I met yeah, a guy at my friend's, <laughs> I want to tell you this, at my friend's, at my, my son, well, I guess my friend's uh-huh. kid's birthday, but my son's friend's uh-huh. birthday, a birthday party for yeah. our kids. And he, it was so nice, and he does a bunch of music, and he was like, yeah, man, hey, I remember you, 2002, Sunset Junction, I have your CDR. Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> we had, and he's explaining we had the me the CDR. Tree CDR. Like, that was so yeah. amazing. Is that like, the one where yeah. you used to put videos in there too? or Because there was one no, like CD that you that could... that you know, technology. I don't think we had any videos on that one. <laughs> so anyway, we were just all of a sudden playing music and, and, and uh, playing shows and trying to f- figure out what we were doing because we were just part of that community. And it was just, it didn't occur to us to like, sell anybody anything or, or try and record or all, we were so baby stepping trying to figure out mm-hmm. uh what this was to us elliot changed that in our at least in my mind by him asking us to open for him in uh, at the henry fonda that with, was a huge with our, step with for rilo kiley who yeah. we were friendly with then became more friendly with over the years felt we wild, you know. Because he's seen the band and he was a fan of I what you were doing. I think he's just like he's a nice guy. Yeah. Like, I don't know if even if it was like, <laughs> yeah, he he just he was just not. We had friends in common, you know. I would never claim that we were close in any way, but he was a really lovely acquaintance, you know. He did. My friend brought. We would sing Stevie Wonder songs in my backyard and stuff. Like <laughs> it's just that kind of vibe. Yeah, he's yeah. such a sweetie, and so good <clears throat> when he, you know, when he was on, he was on. Mm-hmm. But that was like what. And so we just did it best we could. It was and the first time we heard ourselves in the monitors. Like it was, just it was wild. an actual sh- like. It was just like let's yeah. get it's through. It's a big show, by it the way. It was a big show. Yeah, you know, one of your first shows. Well, it was one of the first big shows. We, yeah, yeah we've we been were playing, playing shows for like four years. <laughs> oh, four years. Okay. <laughs> no, so we got no, together no, in two thousand. When was that? Uh, two, two was two thousand two. That was two thousand two. Yeah, so I think that was about two years in. Your first big show. Yes. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. And. um it's funny because that scene was sort of the antithesis of what was going on on the strip, right? On the strip, you had earlier, you had all the hair bands, and then I think the Silver Lake scene started as sort of a result yeah. of the non pay to play. I realized that people yeah. were mad. At, <laughs> I remember going to Sam Ash or something here, and I had my, I had to get a pedal or something. And I had my, my grandfather was a prop man and, and he worked on like Viva Knievel and those kind of things. He knew Evil Knievel. <laughs> so I had his old shirt on and this guy, this guy who looked, who looked straight out of um, like, like um, Slaughter or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he was just like, looked at me and he said, you live in Silver Lake? Oh, you said, yeah, I do. He goes, yeah, you look like you do. <laughs> and I was like, uh oh. It's almost guys, a fist fight. You're with so the band mad. I was like, no, we're not at war with you. <laughs> man. You guys, you guys have held the gate so long. Yeah. Keep it. But it was like, a big trek to come out, out, out to us. We used to always joke the about Silver Lake. <laughs> like we, like these bands. It got to a point where bands from Hollywood were punching and beating each other up to try and get a gig at what when they walked into the Silver Lake Lounge. Went, what is this? He's like, where's yeah. the stage? He's like, what did yeah. you want? This it's is what we stage. do. <laughs> We're barely in stages, you know? It's funny because back then, actually in the late 80s, there was a bunch of clubs, a club called The Scream that mm-hmm. I used to play a lot. Heard, Gloria. Yeah, I've heard a lot about that one. Yeah, that, that was sort of the Silver Lake scene. It was another, yeah, yeah. That was before, because you had that one, you know, the Sunset Strip scene, and then you had... Mm-hmm. 
the scream that you had at the Park Plaza Hotel downtown, Jane's Addiction, a lot of bands played there. Yeah, but uh, but early life, does it feel like it's been 22 years at this point? Does it feel like it was yesterday? It does still feel like yesterday, but, you know, I don't think we would ever thought, oh, we'll still be playing 23 years later, but... Or think we that are. Now. We never thought like what you know. We're just doing it. It's yeah. about the and present. Time has passed, and here we are. Present tense. Yeah, so yeah. it's all sort of about Definitely. you know, and that's basically uh, why you make records, right? Yeah. It's not about what happens after. It's about what you're doing at the moment mm -hmm. and shows. That's why shows are so fun, yeah. right? Because it's like, what is this one going to be like? And that's why I like attending shows, and that's why I like playing them because I'm like for about four, an hour and forty five minutes. Well, this is going to exist and it'll mm -hmm. never exist again. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're all part of this thing and, and it keeps you very present tense and that's what it's about. So we, uh, to think about, for us, it was very difficult to think about f the future, which eventually we did, like you said, because hearing a bootleg of you meant that people want something. <laughs> and if you, they do want something, it shouldn't be this. Yeah, <laughs> It's funny because when you, re you actually recorded Lazy Eye, I think people said you had hey, the demo version. Yeah. Was maybe uh, better people than had the demo record version. Oh, well, people we got advice. People always will. Yeah. Yeah. People always give advice. So that's my advice to fans. When people ask us stuff, I always say, hey, listen, if you're going to get advice from people and just smile and be like, okay. And just <laughs> <Yeah>. go... <laughs> Just don't think about them. Yeah. And if people get rubbed the wrong way, that's great. Like, you totally don't want to, you want people to feel off, put off by you. Because then, then, like, then you're doing like something. They can like the demo. I yeah. like demos better sometimes if just because it's like what's oh, where, where your heart's at. <laughs> yeah, you're like, the first oh. Take. Oh, yeah, our demos like are definitely <laughs> better. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I remember somebody in particular that we were close with sitting backstage. She, she actually pulled me aside. To go into the room at, at this club called Spaceland. Sure. And um, she heard uh, our version, our first EP, Pykel, it's called, and it has a song called Kissing Families on there. And she, after the show, made it a nice person, made it a note to have to pull me into the room to tell me that we ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't hurt me. Who was that person? Oh, uh, she's nice. <laughs> it didn't hurt my feelings because I just got so much of that that we were just like, uh -huh. whatever. Like, I don't know. I, we would get, we would take advice from people not in the way that they thought. Like yeah. We would watch them operate and go, no, dude, this is, <laughs> like, you're... You are actually helping me, but you don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Even early on, you signed to Danger Bird. And I'm yeah. sure a lot of people mm -hmm. said, you you know, go with the major because you're going to go with a small oh. label. What was your thought process there early on? Um, I think that uh, with a more major label, they would have taken more from us or just Danger Bird's like, we'll give you all your publishing, which is actually what they should do. You know, yeah. like, but it, it just... Uh, came together at that time where they we we liked what they were doing so we decided to go with them and they were local and not I mean we've always been about like help like doing things within the community um, and being local so it just seemed to be the right thing at that time yeah we didn't really have a lot of examples where we thought that that would work you know and um we thought they would understand you know they'd I, understand I, it just us sounded too. like a death sentence you know what I mean <laughs> I, I, honestly and Nikki worked at Warner Brothers too, so it was sort of interesting. Like, I'd see it. You never yeah. thought about Warner Brothers as a no. potential. Oh no! I mean, people from Warner Brothers would come to the shows as friends, you know. But I didn't. I never like was pushing us to be yeah. that because I. It I've, just seems like imp we just didn't seem. We were never trying to sell ourselves to other people. Yeah. We we're just yeah. trying to like <clears throat> make something that we were happy with, and. And it just when we would. It's not like they were coming knocking, but mm -hmm. when they did come knocking, it was always like, there's something we can do with you, you know? I'm not sure what it is yet, and we just wanted the free dinner. <laughs> and, and just thought, we're not going to do anything, because honestly, we're not capable of taking... It's like, it's not even like... Uh, we're not, I don't mean any offense to you, Major Label. 
I just mean, I think you wouldn't like working with us because we are go, oh, that sounds cool, but let us get through this first because this seems to be what we have to do. <laughs> and if you and told me how to do it, I don't know. Maybe we'll do that. I don't know. We uh, but we can't literally take direction. Yeah. <laughs> and we didn't want to get lost in the shuffle. No. We had had some friends that, you know, their albums Majors. were getting we just, stuck yeah. up and th- like yeah. they were just like lost their album oh, because yeah. it was not a- being put out. I just signed an A-Record we- deal. Are you happy for yeah. me? No, man. I'm actually very <laughs> afraid for you. And then they're painting the ha- you know how. The common misconception the <sighs> bands used to get these advances for nope. whatever. Uh-huh. Two million dollars. And people don't know that they had to pay them back. Bad, bad, bad. So they wouldn't make oh, money for yeah. years. Bad, but, bad, 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 bad. <laughs> but safe to say, by the way, when you got the call from someone like Peter Mensch and Clipper and Cena Cupron, were you a bit skeptical? Because at that point they were managing the Chili Peppers and Metallica. Oh, yeah. We were very skeptical. Yeah, well, yeah, skeptical we just... is not even the right word. <laughs> Didn't know. <laughs> no, at that put point, it voicemail. At that point, things were really rolling along in a really in a way that was just so surprising. We were just touring and touring and touring and things were getting bigger, but we didn't think about it because it was just so much of the same. Like, And it was hard, and we had somebody that we really liked, um, you know, or we just knew, and it was getting hard for us because we were really doing a lot of it, you know? We were really delegating most of the stuff that was just coming at us, and our, we were getting so exhausted and... They called and we just thought we said no right away because thought same sort of thing like Metallica and Chili Peppers. I was like, what? What is that? Yeah, no, we've no seen offense to those things. It's just a different world. We didn't the see Metallica her. documentary. I'm like, oh, they're so cute in that. Oh, like, you oh, did? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the band or Cliff and Peter? Cliff oh, and Peter. Yeah. I think I did it. know yeah. who Cliff was. Yeah. I, but I, it's a great documentary, you know, by the oh way. Oh, my God, it's so good. It's so powerful. Like, good that Metallica yeah. actually put it out yeah. because it doesn't always show them in the best light true, and it's true, like true. really good. Um, but yeah, well, no, it's looking, it's funny looking back now that we were like pushing them off. I'm like, oh my gosh. It wasn't they a purpose. Like a great... just thought like, <laughs> what is that? You know? And then our, our lawyer who we have had forever, we love her. We still love her. And she, um, we used to just have little meetings where she'd write things on pizza boxes to explain it to us, like how the, <laughs> Send the, the bizarre, like once yeah. things started right. to have to hire people, which we didn't understand <laughs> what that meant. Diagrams of like wow, this is How weird. It works. Like, what? That's a weird. Just two hundred percent of that. <laughs> yeah, pepperoni uh, coupon. Yeah, it was pretty wild. <laughs> and she just said these they they are people that don't reach out, and at the end of the day, just meet them. And I'm very glad we did because what we thought we would meet is not who we met. We met people in a crappy office in Times Square. A guy had an In and Out Burger T-shirt with a stain on it, and he wanted to talk to me about all this cool music that he loved and we lo- we immediately li- liked these people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No BS in any level. They're not, they don't f- fluff you up. Sometimes I wish they would. <laughs> so I think they're not allowed in our backstage they gave, anymore. They gave us each, <laughs> each a, they gave us each a piece of chocolate when we signed Yeah, it was just them. so, no one chocolate. No free dinner. I mean, well, they yeah, probably dinner, but it was just yeah. so, I don't know. It's, the, Cliff Bernstein, all both of them obviously, but Cliff Bernstein in particular, his music philosophy and ours was very great. I mean, honestly, to the point where they've never meddled in anything. We just have never had people meddle yeah. with us. Uh-huh. Uh, they, it's they just don't. Or, or and I think it's maybe because we just can't be for good or bad. It's just going to come out this way, <laughs> you know. The only and and. Um, they just leave us be and just want to know that we're, are you making things? Cool. We'll mm-hmm. hear it when it's done. When it's done. Like yeah, they don't, don't even want to hear it no, during. They They're really. like, don't they, send it to us until. Well, they'll hear it to know that we're doing, doing it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but other than that, we just have so much freedom, you know? And I think it's more like they just recognize that's how we operate. Yeah. And again, I think it's just because we don't know. We wouldn't know how to accept any outside world, you know? Like when we play festivals and things, that's when we realize what's going on. Right. Like, oh, it's poppy now. <laughs> like, oh, uh-huh. like, or no, like, now, oh, like, oh, gr- like, you're not pe- on pedals, anime. pedals are back. Kids are like putting <laughs> stomp boxes back in. But we don't think about ourselves and like what it means in the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm, we're just mm-hmm. a part of, we're just headed of our, our own little circus, you know, and have our own cir- family of circus yeah. and get to kind of go and like Station Eleven style, just go and <laughs> show up in towns. And <laughs> That's where you're discovering new music, by the way, too, I would assume, right? Mm-hmm. The so, festivals. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. yeah festivals. I, if, when we get a chance, you know, like I always tell people like you can have your map of what you want, 
But try not to be too locked into the things you want to see. Like the the best, your favorite band or artist that you're ever gonna know is playing you in, and you don't know it. Yeah, you're gonna walk into a tent and Savages are gonna be playing. Yeah, you know? and, and you're Savages gonna go, is oh, so Game good. Over or yeah. Future Islands and Gary Clark Jr. I Gary Clark Jr. Yeah. Or those I things are not on there. my. It's like I first discovered Idols at a festival. Mm-hmm. And they were so yeah, good. you know so what I mean. Good. Like yeah. that's if you give yourself a chance to walk around because that's it. Definitely. Any highlight festivals, by the way, that you played that you were just like? Oceaga is the best festival in the world. Oceaga. Yes. Oceaga. The best. In Montreal, Montreal, right? It's in Montreal. Ooh, you didn't know, didn't you? You didn't know. Ooh, la la. And I remember when we played, not only was it the best. Where, what city was it in? Montreal. Oh, she got it. (laughs) It started raining during Lazy Eye, and then the the rainbow came out, and um, that was pretty amazing. But um, and they just have wonderful. They have the best food of any festival. Amazing. I think that's also, and it's also Mon- they have a lot of great bands. It's that perfect they pick size. Up. It's Montreal in the summer, yeah. and they, 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 it's, it's. Um, they swap with uh, Lollapalooza, Lollapalooza. Yeah. Right, okay. so they kind of stay on this weekend. So bands on a Saturday will go on a Friday. You know what I mean? Have you played Tokyo yet? That's my favorite place. Yes. Oh yeah, we once, did. Amazing, once right? we were just talking about that. Yeah. We'd love um, to go back. We played. Summer Sonic, yeah, 2008 in uh, Tokyo and Osaka. We are still friends, still to this yeah. day, very friendly with our translator. Amazing. She, her name is Yuko. We met her. We were we shared a bus with MGMT. I don't know what was going on with MGMT <laughs> at the time, but they were just kind of like in the back. And they're trans- they were just all sitting like this. And we just devoured our uh-huh, uh-huh, <laughs> and uh-huh, loved uh-huh. her, nicknamed her Shadow. Yeah. Because her name had something to do with the meaning of a shadow. And so we got along with her so well that that changed Japan. The, our access to Japan was wide open. By the way, it's all yeah. about the access there. Because yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. know the cool no, little it. bars yeah. and the restaurants. She, it's, we went everywhere, yeah. ate everywhere, as, fu- as much as we could for the little time we had. And it was all due to the fact that we had this amazing person with us that eventually moved to Kansas City. <laughs> she would come to our Kansas City <laughs> yeah. shows. Yeah. And then she things. recently, she moved back to Japan. And my husband and I visited her when we were there. I want to oh so bad. I want to go play in Japan. But, you know, it's one of those funny things because people, it, it's just so different, as you know. Yeah. You know, it's this festival. We're on, at, uh, we're at second or third band and we were on at uh, 11 a.m. Yeah, we're like nobody's gonna yeah. be there. Tough slot. We were like, no. yeah, we yeah, not we in were Japan. Like, not well, in Japan. <laughs> yeah, you think it would be a tough slot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we it were just like, listen, we, we're always happy to be invited to the party. Yeah. So if you want us to like oh, hold the door open, and then we get to go see Spiritualize later, <laughs> we'll do that. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I'll play acoustic while you're loading up your stuff, and then I'll go watch a bunch of bands like Devo Aww. and stuff. Um, so we weren't sad about it at the time. We were just like, "What a funny thing to like." We're to like, do it's that. interesting. It's so trafficy when we're arriving at like nine a.m. Everyone's there at ten a.m. Everyone wow. was anyone there. who's Amazing. going to the festival. Is Every there single <laughs> person at the festival was at the festival at eleven, and it was packed. Amazing. And we're people are always going, "Oh yeah, it's going to be different." You know, they kind of clap. They just do that, and that's not what I saw. Amazing. Somehow they uh, must have studied our music because they learned every song. And at the end of the night, oh, as everyone was leaving. It was spotless. Everyone spotless. picks up their own. Everyone, like everyone brings back their trash. No, at the end it. of the yeah. evening. No, 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 people were really crazy. They were jumping around. No, fun. they were crazy, but like just I've never been to a... We always see what's, what it's like she, after she a show. She means like the trash. Oh, yeah. The it's trash. so yeah. clean there. So clean. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, well, there's fast zero fo- garbage. Zero garbage. <laughs> <laughs> we could talk about this all day long, by the way. Yeah, we Let's could. Let's talk about <laughs> okay. how much trash there is at Japanese festivals. <laughs> none. <laughs> yeah, is, is the answer none? None. I was going to talk about my Spinal Tap moments because I once played at the oh. Metro in Chicago before it oh. opened. Oh. I played, I played there like there. 8 there. and the doors opened at 8.30. I was like, why did we do this? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> we, like played, <laughs> we played Silver Lake Lounge at, at when it shouldn't have been open. Right. Because uh, our, the, Scott Sterling, who was the booker, didn't know Lou, Lou Barlow and Alaska were two different bands. He thought, because uh, Alaska would play with yeah, Lou Barlow, yeah, 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 yeah. and he didn't know that they were two. So he, we were playing after Lou Barlow, which is how I actually met, we met Lou Barlow and became huh. friends. And we played at like 145, but it was closed. And we still played, <laughs> and we didn't care. <laughs> Amazing. Partly how we got 
in the beginning so much as yeah. I think they was like Silver always, Sun will do it. We always would take <laughs> yeah. anything. Yeah, we didn't care. We'd either be first or dead last, but yeah. we were like, we'll do it. So they always had us. And yeah, that's we when were... we got better playing together. Mm-hmm. It was just like learning at that time. By the way, it really worked because you got nominated for a Grammy. So that's pretty incredible. Yeah, if we talk weird, about yeah. that. That's got to be a life. You know, one of those moments in life, it's almost surreal. We were like nominated for a Grammy, right? Hmm. Yeah, that was, that a was weird, nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that was nice. But uh, when you think about it, how do you feel about it now that you have time to reflect on you it? You know, I don't know. I don't really. You don't. I, I, once in a while, people will go Grammy nominated, and we go. Let's I was try just it. thinking, actually, last night um, that I need to find. They give you a little medallion when you're nominated, <laughs> and That's it, right. from Tiffany's. It's so nice, and I Is need it to find Tiffany's? it. It's you lost the, it. I no, have it's it. in the garage somewhere. But, <laughs> I have it somewhere. But I was there. like, that might be nice to. Take you out. know, I, I just, it's, again, entering some world that is not something that we have any relationship with, really, beyond the fact that when you're a kid and you wanted to see your the band, but, I don't know, you know, uh, on TV. Yeah. But there was no real relationship with it, especially at that point. Also, with the Grammy, so we just went, oh, okay, that's, what's that going to be like? Also, because it was Best <clears throat> New Artist, and at that point we were together for like 10 years. Yeah, but I, see, So that's just when we came into their stratosphere. Yeah, but, yeah, but people got bent out of shape about that, and I just thought, who cares? We're just like, yeah. like to them we are, and it doesn't matter. But we were warned when you go to the red carpet, you will, and, and the Grammy nomination, you will now be asked dump the dumbest things yeah. like you are now going to get some real low common denominator yeah. like who's your favorite Hollywood crush <laughs> that's my next question and then if you actually well it's uh, it's it's, it's, uh, what's it's his name Pedro from Pascal Vin yeah. <laughs> yeah. Diesel I don't know Pedro uh, Pascal baby. not Vin Diesel I'm kidding, I'm kidding. the um, rock if you're doing uh, and we did get those questions yeah. and even when you were cheeky about it they didn't quite get the joke yeah. you're like oh really but the weirdest one was on the red carpet. Um, somebody asked Christopher, our drummer, said, "Is this your first time being nominated for Best New Artist?" And we're like, "I think that's how it works." Seven years ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's how Best New Artist works. We're not sure. It's funny. Then, I was reminiscing with Matt Pinfield last night about the Grammys. We were talking about the time that Jethro Tull got nominated for like Best Metal Album yeah, or something. Lars couldn't get a, over it. Such a strange. Lars couldn't get over it. Yeah, yeah. It's a strange thing. You know, uh, it, it, uh, all of listen. Everything, everywhere, all at once. <laughs> no, no, everything, everywhere is made up. It's all made up. Yeah. you know. So everybody's got their own rules on what they. Why not? Yeah. That's all. You know. And, Lara, and, it made, and, and I'll never forget Lars just being so upset about it, and like even mentioning it later when they did win. Yeah, I remember thinking. It must be nice. It's the guy with the flute. It was a strange thing. <laughs> Whatever. You know, Jeff Hotel deserves awards. <laughs> yeah. Everybody deserves awards. Well, let's talk about your sixth album, Butch Vig, once again. Yeah. Right? Incredible mm-hmm. producer. Not a, you, have you met Butch? I haven't, but it's funny because I play drums with Courtney Love. So there's a <gasps> oh, lineage no there. So there's definitely a connection there. So we That's talk awesome. sometimes on Instagram. Oh, We're in great. this like friend group thing. Oh, but, uh, yeah. He's but a, I don't know him, but he's an incredible producer. You should meet You should talk yeah, to him. I'd he's wonderful. Yeah. I'm ask, assuming ask you're, him. Yeah, I would love to. I'm assuming you're big fans of We're some of the We're literally and, going into his house right now. Right after well, this because well, we have some it, stuff. Okay. Yeah, well. Amazing. Yeah. But you were huge fans, I guess, of some of the most amazing records ever that he did, right? Yeah, but we're more fans of him as a person. Like he... He is officially now, as a friend, outshined anything he's ever done for me musically in Even my never life. Mind, yeah, I mean, that, that was cha- never mind was a life changing experience, um, for sure. And uh, again, going back to my sister, I tell Butch this story, and Butch has another story about a guy trying to beat him up at a high school reunion because because <laughs> oh, all the bands he I'm likes aren't popular time. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I remember I, I always tell Butch, I'm like, it is wild. Um, it's very rare you have these moments. And I was like, I remember my sister's boyfriend, who was w- probably one of those no bozo jam guys, yeah. who probably had an apartment in Hollywood that had an amp peg as a table. <laughs> and he wanted, he called my sister up and he wanted to talk to me. And my sister says, Hey, he wants to talk to you. So I answered the phone. I was like, Hey, how's it going? He goes, Hey, Brian, you don't like Nirvana, do you? Hmm. I said, Yeah, I do. And he went, Oh, <laughs> it told me so much about what was happening, like how the like the threat 
of this thing, which is interesting because we now live in a universe where Def Leppard and, and Nirvana can coexist yes. and you can enjoy both. Yes, you yes. Know? But at the time, that was not the case. That's true. You know, they had the reins for way too long. Yeah. You know? Remember the fight between Axel and Kurt at the MTV Awards? Yeah, they had to. Yeah. They had to leave. They had to. Um, the, the story is they had to get out of there. Yeah, because their guns were just pretty pissed off about <laughs> yeah. the whole like. What was it? I they mean, said, that's like, silly. Yeah, well, yeah I think Doug was involved. I don't know, it's well, because it's not. You know, it's it's like if you're at that moment, Guns N' Roses is at its most bloated, where you are on stage with this. Massive orchestra, Elton John's coming out. It's so insane. And then you have three people, one of them knocks himself out with a bass that's just slashing around. They're clearly cooler. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you are clear. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah. you get to meet Butch. I think you met him at like a taco place. Oh, well, or something, we met right? him over and over time just through mm -hmm. friends. And we always liked him. I met him at the taco place. He saw me. That's when he wanted me to sing. For garbage. For garbage on yeah. the track. And then I went over there while we were, um, where were we, where were we were, yeah, we were making a record with Jackknife, who we love too. Oh. Jackknife Lee, who we adore. He's a wild man, you know? Yeah. And um, A lot of energy. He's wonderful. And <laughs> yeah. Topanga, I just love that guy. And then, but we always like to sort of move on and, and, and try something new. And so I had such a good experience working with Butch and Billy Bush, who's his right-hand man, Shirley Manson's husband. Yeah. And I came back to them just like, oh, it was such a nice experience that when we went when the next record, I just thought, let's just let's just ask Butch. And he always seems willing to. So let's just say, hey, you want to yeah. do it? And we did. <laughs> and I'm so glad we did because it is amazing. And the process of this record, actually, you didn't even do demos, right? You just sort of went to the studio yeah. and just sort of came out of you, right? Yeah, you know, it's just different. It was, you know, what a, what a time yeah. you're all in, right? Yeah, a lot to write about. Yeah, uh, it was more really like talking about that present tense meditative thing. If it's healthy for somebody like me, it was more like there's these little pockets where I wasn't helping my son Zoom school and things like that. And I just needed, I would just find pockets to be in my room and like have the acoustic and just start making things just to feel better and keep myself com com company. Yeah. And just eventually those become, and I don't know what they are for. You know, they were just, they were, I guess that's what they were for, you know, to just give me something to work on. Um, and then over the length of it, as vaccination started, I felt like, well, I got some stuff and, and let's just, you know, maybe there's a Silver Sun stuff. I don't know. You know, I mean, that's what our band is, I guess, but you know, I don't know if these are good. I don't know what these are, right. you know? And, um, just said, but if you, if you, we know now how we work with each other and he's so quick and he loves, he loves to be lost and he likes wanderlust. That's what's so great about him. Yeah. He's not in any way cemented into like the successes of what he has. He has a great perspective of it. And I think he's actually even coming to grips with that perspective because it's an, a, probably a very intense feeling to have, be involved, be one of a very small amount of people involved in something so massively important to Definitely. people that I think even he, as he's growing, is having a better relationship with mm -hmm. it, you know? And some of the best ears in the business. Profound yeah. stuff, yeah. but just never mind. Forget yeah. everything else. Yeah. yeah. That just means so much to people. It's so big. It's bigger than anything. anything yeah. You know? Kirk Cobain is going up on people's walls to this day. You know what I mean? And it just touches people still. And so he's one of the only conduits to access it. Yeah. But he's not. he doesn't live there. He he's lives now, and he, he has all that um, experience, but it it's just another way for him to get lost where he feels happiest, and that's where we feel happiest. And so when we met, and when he sees us, and that when and I'm sure bands say that a lot, but as soon as they get down to it, maybe they inadvertently put their safeties up. Well, we got to sound like this and this and that and this. And it, he met us and he, he realized that we really meant it when we didn't know, like we wanted to just see where this, we want, you know, we want to get lost and get confused. And, and he, that's the place he loves to live too. Now, does he Confusing give you a lot of guidance? Confusing is very fun. Yeah, does he give you a lot of guidance or does he just let you do your thing and say at the end of the song, you know, sounded great? Or is he in there really no, he, picking he, apart the songs? Will, he'll just, he'll say... He'll say something here, you know, and then we'll kind of go, oh, yeah. He's good at, like, aiming you towards the corners. Because mm -hmm. if you're if you're part of the 
like getting it out to him and the band it's so hard like you know when you have it in your mind you play music right so you have it in your mind is that getting it out of your mind to reality where people are going to now tinker on it it can be a clumsy journey yeah. <laughs> i hate the word journey by the way because <laughs> watch the oscars and i was like you everybody take a drink when someone yeah, says yeah. brave and journey <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but uh, it, it can be clumsy, and with Butch, it, he's so quick, and there's it, it makes it's easy for me to get it out, and and I thought it would even be easier if it was just like okay, the band hasn't been vaccinated yet. I have, you have, you feel comfortable? Let's just start quicker. We're not gonna demo, not gonna do anything. We're gonna come in, and I'm gonna play you these things on acoustic. What I think how some of it very complete. Some of it have lots of parts, and we'll see what happens. And he's fast, so we're going and going and going. And then it was easily an album. Mm. Like, oh, so, so much more. And I didn't, I guess I didn't realize it. I didn't realize how much was in there, you know? And Happened then, fairly quickly for you in terms of the recording process? Was it uh, so quick? Yeah. He's quick. We're he quick. quick. We work really yeah. fast. It's, it's, you gotta, and you have to be paying attention in there. Or you'll get lost. Yeah. You How know? does his production style differ from other producers you work with, by the way? Just because I feel like as a drummer, he has a different take on things. Well, he has a really interesting take, don't you think? Well, I think he he makes it a point to get everything out of each individual mm. person. You know, he's not just like, although, you know, he started with, with Brian on this one. He's just just as curious to see what everyone else wants to contribute, which I think as a member, as you know, as a drummer in garbage, he knows what it's like to be in a band and, and, and to, uh, I think he's great at drawing things out of people. And for being such a, a, a fast worker, he's also the most patient person I think that we've ever worked with. Like he'll just wait on something and just have you try things multiple times in different ways. And he has a way of making you feel very, comfortable and confident and just like never makes you feel like you're wasting his time which is i mean works really well for us yeah so because you kind of skipped the demo process for this record but other records were you actually demoing before or what i mean what was the process yeah we started i mean almost honestly we there's only three records that we demoed and and rough like we we don't we are not concerned with recording ourselves never really have been we're not concerned with like how things sound necessarily. Like uh, a lot of times, I don't have lyrics, but I'm a real good mumbler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, har- like think ways in which he wants the, like when we, the words to go once yeah. the words yeah, I, come. I, yeah, because I, I like to play around with things too. Because I want to try and I, I like the way things sing out. And sometimes it's like you have good maps of where you want it to. It's go. important to me that. You know, with with words, I want them to have parameters because it's like, it's just I like the way this sounds. So it has to be a word that has that thing. It just has to, you know, mm-hmm. for me. Um, but um, he is a like you said, he's a band member, and I think that makes him. I mean, and garbage. Now that we we know this now more than we ever did before, is a functioning, oh, probably yeah. now more bigger yeah. than ever. Uh, and he is a member of a band, a full working band, and he's one of a group of people. And so he absolutely knows where that comes from. And yeah. I think that makes it that makes it with the limited amount of producers that we've worked with, who are all wonderful. We're lucky. Mm-hmm. Um, that perspective, especially for our uh, Christopher, our drummer, is uh, I think what really makes it special mm. and unique. Even on Empty Nest, you're singing more, Nikki, which is great, yeah. right? So. Is it, do you feel like it's Oh, something? I think that he helped give me even more confidence in, in doing that. And I think Brian has always like encouraged me to sing more. And I think that I just like got some space to experiment more, which was, which has been a really nice experience on this one, especially. Yeah, and the record's been out since I think August of last year. Now that you've had some time to sit with it, you have some favorite songs for the set list. It's got to be hard putting together a set list, by the way. You know, so many great songs. It, this, oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, it was it was. It's hard to put together a set list because our songs are long, mm-hmm. and so nothing under four minutes. But yeah, people. <laughs> <laughs> so funny people. We play those radio festivals, which listen. Like I said, 
we're happy to be invited to all, all parties. <laughs> you know, it's and we're we're there to do our job. But somebody will be like, yeah, I could only play like 10 songs. We had half an hour. And I went, wow. we played five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was really weird. We barely played anything. And people are like, don't even think of yelling out a song title because that's already taking up time. Um, <laughs> no talking in between. This, yeah. this time, I think during the, we got a lot of tour, uh, uh, local touring or North American touring. We got some of it done for the record previously. It was called Widow's Weeds before we canceled. And then... There was these little makeup show pockets that we would, I mean, this is a really weird sentence to say, but it's true. Between Omicron and Delta, or I can't remember the name, Delta and between yeah. the two Autobots, yeah. we toured. Like, there's moments of these little bursts of touring mm -hmm. in COVID, and, and uh, that was fun because we thought, let's completely do something we never would have done. It is going to be every single single, whatever that means. But you know what I mean? Yeah. Like anything that's sort of that. We just did all of that. And that made our set a little longer. And that was fun. And but then by doing that, we, by the time it came to this, we said, uh, you know what? We're just going to play a little longer. And this is going to be physical thrills heavy. And and then we're, we will scatter those songs throughout. We always sort of will, yeah. but we're leaning into this. And as the shows went on, and just the way it, just the way it's gone, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but it's, it's the feeling that we've been getting from people involving the album. We added more of those. I think because we've know? been putting out a, a video for every song yeah. too. It's like by the time we get to the shows, people are familiar with a lot more of people our know new this album. record a lot. <laughs> You know, yeah. and it's exciting. It's a great record, by the way. Thank Physical you. Thrills. Thank, you. Thank you. More touring coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to me about the tour coming up. You just finished literally like a couple days ago. I think it's all going to be spurts. There's so many places we still haven't been. So we're, we're, we have a lot of touring coming up. <laughs> Maybe in the Northwest and the Northeast. Uh, we have a lot of touring. Maybe Tokyo. Maybe. Oh, man. Tokyo. That would be we something. Would, uh, out there I would love to. You want to go? It's on the way to I Seattle. Go. Let's go. Yeah. Where do you want to go? When, yeah. when you I'll go, go whenever. Let's I do it. it. You want to go to Iceland? Let's play in Iceland. <laughs> I want to go to Iceland. That's where I want to play. <laughs> okay. Sure. Well, we do this fun thing at the end of the show, which is always something that people seem to really love. So I'm going to ask you some questions here. The top five most underrated bands of all time. That's a tough one. So for some pickups. You want, you want to... Uh, Silver. Well, I no. mean, in, in my mind, it would be bands that everyone knows that are great, but they just never got quite as popular as exactly. their contemporaries yeah. or something. Like, um, I mean, I guess I would say... But see, I don't... Like the Kinks, okay. I feel number like... Number five, the Kinks. Number five. We'll just go with that. That's a good one. And... Um, I mean, I still, like I said before, the Radar Brothers are one of my favorite. They have the one of the best albums ever called And the Surrounding Mountains. So I would say that everyone should know them. Brian, number three? 10,000 Maniacs. Okay. And I feel like that's, again, it's weird to me that when the people, when I play those music, people don't know it and love it. Or people go, oh, yeah, where are they? Uh -huh. I'm like, I don't know why this isn't being played all over the place still. You know what I mean? Uh, number two, the top five most underrated bands of all time. Radiohead. They really <laughs> need a chance. <laughs> no, Let's no, give wait. those guys a break. Yeah, what's number two? Number I, I say two. The Vinyls or Sinead O'Connor. I think we could say... Both of those, because I think Sinead O'Connor got a bad rap record. because there was so much other publicity with the, her that sometimes her music got lost in that because... I think she got too big. That she, song was too big for somebody like her. Yeah, but her actual albums are wonderful and really the innovative. first you know? record yeah. is the punk rock. Yeah, She's so punk rock. And to the point on Saturday Night Live, that whole thing. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. what, a, what a bunch of garbage that is, right? So number one, Sinead O'Connor. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Right now, you know, Let's it's all that. about, we like so much stuff, <laughs> so it's like, whatever, right whatever we're focusing <laughs> yeah. on now, this will change. <laughs> but that's what I think. What was number two? Divinals? Let's do Divinals. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. And yeah. last but not least, the top five Silver Sun pickup songs of all time. Uh, oh, and I know Nikki's. Yeah, you do know my favorite. Can I guess your number one? <laughs> You don't have to guess it. You know it. Yeah. Yeah. Growing old is getting old yeah. is your number one. I feel like we both got teary-eyed on that one. 
I remember what? you got teary eyed when we listened to the mix, but I had just been, oh, when we I had it. just been hiding my tears because I heard it right before you got in, and then you started. Yes, I mean, it's weird to be teary eyed about your own <laughs> song, but there is something special. I there's think something, about well, that. It was, it was that record was hard to do. That was number yeah, one. Yeah, it took for you. Yeah, for you. One. Okay, for, for me, me. Yeah. Well, number two. Let's go, Chrono. That was number one. Okay. So number two. Well, it might be a co number one. So bye bye. I le- I'm a real recency bias. I'm really proud of I guess the songs that I think about that I like the most are the ones that feel real, meaning like there's something about them that I can not hear myself in. You know, I can actually as close as I can judge it on, on its own which is impossible, really, to do. I have no clue what our band sounds like. I'll never know we're, like, live. You don't Google the band, nothing. No. Uh, well, I assume, <laughs> this is what I assume. We're the greatest band in the world. We're the worst thing that's ever happened. I don't need the internet to tell me. I, I just exist, like, knowing that that's probably how it goes, if we're, like, anything else in the world. I mean, at a show recently, I was like, I wonder what this sounds like. Yeah, I wonder what we do. <laughs> Sometimes, you ever trip out, like, I wonder, I wonder who what, we are. What, what are you watching? You know what I mean? What what. Is this? You know, <laughs> do right, you know my, you know my son number made two. that T-shirt. He's seven. Oh. Um, number two, Silver Sun pickups. Of all I'm time. a big fan of a song called Sticks and Stones on the new record. Yeah, I I love that one. Great song. I'm I'm proud of it, and I just I'm so thrilled that somehow that it came out. <laughs> my favorite song on the new record, by the way. No way. Yeah. Awesome. Oh. I'm good. Talk about Bernstein and our manager. I was like, <laughs> oh, I really love this. And he's like, huh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number three. Um, hey, go ahead. How do you feel? I feel good ab- about how Quicksand turned out. I really like that Oh, one. another new yeah. one. Yeah, yeah Quicksand's, Quicksand's one. a tough one for me because it's definitely emotional. I'm glad we're playing it because it's hardening hardening me to it. Because uh-huh. now I have yeah. a different relationship with it that's technical. Mm-hmm. And once that kind of gets involved, where I'm like trying to make it happen live, I can have a little bit of a before. I just the thought of playing it live is like, whoa, why? But now I'm so glad we do. Yeah, yeah. people love because I love <laughs> when people don't know. Like the idea of our band is like everyone is. I I would say. Watching everybody grow, everybody's gotten pretty good at their instrument. Aww. But nothing is designed for you to know that. Going back to Elliot Smith, what was so amazing about Elliot Smith is that he's clearly one of the best players I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. But you think you could just pick uh-huh. up the guitar and play a bunch of basic chords, and you probably can play Not his like songs. Him. Yep. But you don't know that. <laughs> right. But you have the vibe that you could because there's nothing showing off about it at mm-hmm. all. And when you watch it, you're like, what? <laughs> I had no idea that's what was going on. So it's like, that's always felt important to me. Like anytime stuff gets real technical and stuff, we're always hoping that it doesn't, it's not spotlighted, you know? But live, when those moments do get spotlighted and people are aware what is actually happening, like a quicksand, mm-hmm. you, it's actually your bass and doing stuff. It's, it tickles me beyond, <laughs> beyond measure that people go, what, Nikki? <laughs> I love that so much. Um, so, all right, quicksands number three. Okay, yeah. I'm going to go way back. Oh, well, no, I can't. I, number four is a song off of Better Nature, which is our f- fourth know. record. It's called Pins and Needles. Yep. I, I'm real proud of that one. Something live we played here and there, never quite spent enough time with it as a mm-hmm, group mm-hmm. to get it to where I wanted. You know what I mean? Acoustic, it always felt the best. We were close. And and to people they probably heard it, you know. You know how it is yeah, when you're playing. Course. It's almost less about like the output. The output is the same, but your the way you get to deliver that output is clunky in your exactly. head. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, I don't like the way that feels. But they hear it and it's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you don't like how it felt coming out of you because it was too difficult. And they have no idea what's going on behind the no, scenes. No, and honestly, yeah, you know what it's like. Your yeah. the worst shows of your life are the ones <laughs> yeah. people love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, it was those club days. Wow, that was a bad one. You guys were great tonight. And then you. Like, that was the worst were, show of my life. You played very well. And people were like, yeah, it's it cool. Yeah. <laughs> and number five. A old one. I mean, 
Are you saying it? Let's see. Are you saying something? Let's no, say it, I here, just Let's know, say it together well, at the same time. Ready? No, I don't think go. it's going to be the Hold same Hold on. Let's one. do the same it's one. It's not going here, to be. No, I know it is. Okay. It's going to be a podcast miracle. Okay. So There's no way it won't be the same. It might not Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Lazy uh, eyes. We'll <laughs> I can't not I say lazy, lazy eyes. I mean, it's oh, such yeah, an iconic yeah. song. No, I love it too. But I was going to say maybe too mel- much in I was going to say melatonin as one of my favorites. But uh, for me, it's all the go in between. All the go in between, which is enough. off of Pykele. Yeah. And again, th- my list is because I, I I love lazy eye. I just hear myself, so it's like. It's another one of our fake songs. <laughs> that like that. It's another one that was like we duped. What? Are, <laughs> wow! I wonder when people are going to figure out. We don't know what we're doing. Interesting like, family. Like Nikki, they still think we're a real band. <laughs> you know, but, Brian and Nikki. I could do this for like nine hours. Yeah, it's a this pleasure. Is a pleasure. I hope we get to yeah. do this again. Yeah, let's for do it again. Sure. Yeah, let's bring Butch. Part two. We'll we should, do SSVU. Okay. We, we got to get Butch that. Vig in oh. here. I would love to. That'd yeah, be great. he's yeah. you. You'd love him. Well, I want you to. You'll make the connection or something. I'll make it in about five minutes. Yeah, we got it. Oh my gosh, we got. I know. Awesome. Well, thank okay. you so much All for right, coming. I really you. appreciate it. Great to see okay. you back. All right. Awesome. Bye.